fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, folks, look around. Do you know someone who just yearns for a brand new bike? A real watch, maybe? Perhaps a doll? Or a new baseball glove? And how about you youngsters? What would you choose from over 30 delightful premiums like those? All at big, big savings. Well, listen, it's General Mills' Rainbow Premium Plan. You get wonderful premiums at savings up to 50%. Timex watches, for example. These retail for $7.65 at the store. But with 12 rainbow coupons, you get them for only $4.50. Say, that's almost half price. Here's all you do. First, send for your free catalog of exciting rainbow premiums. Just mail your name and address on a postcard to General Mills, Box 3, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Second, start now to save Rainbow Premium Coupons. You'll find them on the box tops of all General Mills cereals. They're on Wheaties, Cheerios, Trix, Kiss, Sugar Jets, and the Betty Crocker pick a pack With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. The Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, and his faithful Indian companion, Toto, rode into Collins Corners to do some trading at the general store. When they saw a number of people assembled near the stagecoach terminal, they realized that the westbound was due to arrive. Interest seemed to be focused on a fine-looking elderly man. His name was Amos Whitcomb. Boys, I've told you all I know about Tom. He was in jail when the war ended, and I reckon he'd have been there for a good many years if I didn't just happen to have a little cash. Now I've got to get back to my ranch and fix things up. Tom will be coming home in a week or so. Here comes the stage, folks. Wait around, Amos. Maybe there'll be a letter from Tom for you. Maybe so. <laughs> I'll wait and see. Now, well, let's get over by the stage. Did you hear what that man said about his son? He was in jail when the war ended. Ah, me here. I thought most of the prisoners were released. Except the really bad ones. Ah. Mr. Whitcomb's son was jailed for something serious. I don't see how he could get him out with money. Hey, look who's driving with a drive. Hey, 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 Sam, how'd you make it to quit? To quit? It's only a few days since you gave your friend the money to get you out of prison. Money? Prison? Sure. Ricky Sanders. Isn't he the one who got you out? How'd he do it to quit? Dad, I wasn't in prison. You... You weren't? I don't know anyone named Ricky Sanders. But... But Tom... I was mustered out three weeks ago. It took me all this time to get here. Did you give someone money? Yes. Yes, Tom, I, I did. Tell me about it, Dad. Give me all of the details. Dan Reed and Toho were frankly curious. They lingered near Tom and his father, pretending to repack their saddlebags. 
while they listened to Amos Whitcomb's story. Then they rode to a nearby camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Dan Reed told what they had learned. So someone named Sanders called on Amos Whitcomb and told him his son was in an army prison? That's right, and it was a lie. Tom wasn't in there. How much did Whitcomb pay the man? Two thousand dollars. It was all he had. Tom didn't know anyone named Sanders? No, sir. I'm surprised anyone would trust a stranger with that much money. Well, that's just what Tom said. But Mr. Whitcomb said Ricky Sanders knew so much about Tom. He claimed that they'd been soldiers together. There couldn't be any doubt about them being friends. All right, come on. Well, that's it. Out of the horses, we've got a claim with Amos Whitcomb and his son. Toto remained in camp while Dan Reed rode with the masked man to the Flying W, the small ranch owned by Amos Whitcomb. In the meantime, Ricky Sanders was miles away in the town of Cottonville. He rode up to a small white oh, cottage. Oh, yeah. It's mounted, flat dust from his army uniform, and rapped on the door. How do you do, miss? I hope I have the right house. I'm looking for Charles Denton's home. This, this is where he lives. Well, he wants to see his sister Barbara. Yes, but, but what about Charles? He must have brought news. Is your mother at home? Yes. Who is it, Barbara? Mother, you better come here. May I step in? Oh, yes, yes, of course. There's anything wrong here. Mother, the soldier knows Charles. Oh. Well, Mrs. Denton, he... He asked me to come here. He thought maybe you'd be able to help him. What does he want? Have you heard from him recently? Not for the past two months. Oh. And you didn't know... Didn't know what? Your son's in prison. Uh, prison? Oh, no, not Charles. He wouldn't do anything wrong. It's a military prison, uh, Mrs. Denton. I think something can be done. That's why I came here. You see, money spent in the right place will do a lot of things. I have some money, but not enough. You mean you can bribe someone? It's a great risk. If I were found out, I'd be shot. We have some money saved. Uh, How much do you need? It'll take quite a bit. At least a thousand dollars. I have a few hundred of my own, and I'm willing to spend that. In the meantime, Dan Reed and the Lone Ranger reached the Whitcomb home. At first, Amos and his son were surprised and full of questions about the mask. But in a few moments, the Lone Ranger convinced them of his sincerity and explained... Sanders might have had a partner. Now, think hard, Amos. Were there any strangers in town asking questions about your son? Well, just Mr. Appleby. But he was a fine, soft-spoken, white-haired old gent. He's traveling through the state making a record of tight Texas fighting men. Did he ask questions about me? Just your name and regiment, that's all, Tom. He wasn't a bit curious about you. We spent most of the time talking about Hank Denton. Well, who is he? Hank lived in Cottonville. He got killed about eight years ago fighting Indians. He was more interested in Hank's family. His widow and his daughter Barbara and Hank's boy. Who? Charlie Denton. He's been in the Army, same as Tom. Well, has he returned? Yeah, he hadn't, up to a couple of days ago. Well, thanks for the information, Amos. Come on, Dan. We'll get Tom and go to Carsonville. Good night, Good night. Good night. Adios. Tom, I have an idea. What is it, Dad? That masked man is looking for Sanders. You go tell the sheriff that he'd better get on the trail of the masked man. Maybe he'll lead us to that cook, and we can get back my $2,000. He said he was going to call on Mrs. Denton in Carsonville. Tell the sheriff that. <laughs> Accompanied by Toto, the Lone Ranger and Dan maintained a steady pace throughout the night toward the town of Carsonville. After some delay in preparations, the sheriff set out for the same destination. It was morning when the masked man called at Mrs. Denton's home. He introduced himself as a friend of Amos Whitcomb. Has a man named Applegate been here? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Mrs. Denton, what did he talk about? Oh, he asked a lot of things about my husband. He's going to put Hank in a book. 
A history book? He's going to tell all about Dad and his fights with the Indians. Did uh, Mr. Applegate say where he was going from here? I think he planned to go to Rocky Springs. He asked a lot of questions about Kit Lambert. Kit Lambert? Is he a soldier? Yes. Has he returned from the war? No, he hasn't. Father hasn't heard from him in months. Oh, I'm so sorry for Joe. He doesn't know whether his boy is alive or dead. I guess Mr. Applegate isn't the man I want. I'm looking for a younger fellow. He called himself Rick Sanders. Oh, what about him? Has he been here? Why do you want to know? Did he say he was a friend of your son, Mrs. Denton? Did he offer to, well, let us say, to help your son? I, I, I don't care to talk about it. Oh, what? I'll find out. Now, howdy, Miss Barbara. Why, sir, what are you doing in Carsonville? I'm here looking for a masked man. He, yeah, there he is. I want you, mister. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one to have that these people have to say. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Wheaties. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musial, known as Stan the Man. Because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties' energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you do, 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 and I'll take to continue. When Tom Whitcomb told the sheriff about the masked man's interest in Rick Sanders, the sheriff was convinced that Sanders had an accomplice. He went to Carsonville and caught up to the Lone Ranger in the home of Mrs. Denton. Yes, I don't understand. Is this man an outlaw? Now, put down your gun. I've got to leave Carsonville in a hurry. Oh, no, you don't. I'm holding you, sir. If I haven't time to argue with you, hey, I'll have to take that gun. Oh, are you? you leave it beside your horse. We can take it out. Hey, c- come back here. Come back, I tell you. I want to talk to you. It was after dark when the Lone Ranger and Toto reached Joe Lambert's house on a small ranch near Rocky Springs. Toto, you take the horses around to the rear of the house and see if you can find some water for them. Ah, you do it. I'm coming. Dan, you might as well stay with me. The Lone Ranger had no way of knowing that the one man in the house was not Joe Lambert, but actually the individual called Applegate. Yes, why... Ma- mask. Are you Joe Lambert? Well, what if I am? What does that mask mean? If you're Joe Lambert, I want to talk to you about a man named Applegate, the younger man who calls himself uh, Rick Sanders. Why are you making these inquiries? Uh, reckon you'd better step inside. All right. Come on, Dan. Oh, this is Dan Reed. How do you? Glad to know you, Mr. Lambert. No use asking your name. If you wanted it known, you wouldn't wear that mask. Oh, that's right. Oh, sit down. Oh, thanks, thanks. No, what's this about a couple of crooks? Applegate and Sanders work together. Applegate pretends to be an historian and asks questions about people in the West. Then Sanders uses the information to get cash. Oh, how? When Applegate talked to Mrs. Denton, he learned a lot about your son, Kit. With those facts, Rick Sanders can come here and make you believe that he was a close friend of your son in the Army. Yes, yes. He'll tell you Kit's in prison and needs money to get out. Mm. He'll take cash from you on the promise of getting your son out of trouble. Mm. If he does, perhaps we can trap him and get back the money he stole from Amos Whitcomb and Mrs. Denton. But how? Well, he'll tell you Kit needs money. Now, draw him out as far as you can. Then call your son. My son? But he... Uh, this young fellow, Dan Reed, will pose as your son. We'll have him come in from the back room. 
Then we'll cut, Sanders. This lad looks a little young to take the part of a soldier just home from the war. Well, there were many young soldiers in the army. Well, your plan sounds like a good one. If Sanders is telling the truth and really knows your son, you'll call our bluff when Dan walks in from the other room. I don't understand why you're interested in this. Are you a lawman? Not exactly. But that mask... The mask means the same thing to me as a badge means to the sheriff. Have you told the sheriff of your suspicions? No. Why not? Well, there hasn't been time. Those crooks have been working west. I had to travel fast to get one jump ahead of them. Now, when they catch up, we'll have them. I think they caught up. I see a couple of horsemen out in the front. One of them's wearing a the uniform. Oh, so they're traveling together now. Oh. Will you cooperate so we can trap them, Mr. Lambert? Yeah, yeah. Uh, come with me, Dan. We'll go to the other room. Stay where what? you are. Oh, What's the matter with you? You heard me. Those men will be here in a couple of seconds. And you stand right there and wait for them, or I'll blow your head off. It was one of the few times in his life that the Lone Ranger was taken completely by surprise. The old man held his gun directly on Dan Reed. His mild manner gave way to the merciless expression of a killer. The Lone Ranger stood motionless. He didn't care to risk Dan's life by trying to draw a gun. Get your gun, Rick. What's this mean? Rick, cover Lambert. Get him up, Lambert. The Lone Ranger realized the truth. It was Applegate himself and not Joe Lambert who had listened to the plan. Keep him up, Lambert. Good work, Ricky. I like someone who can act quick. You, Lambert, stand over with the masked man and the kid. That must be Applegate. Yes, Dan. We're a little late in realizing it. Applegate? I don't savvy. Why the gun play? Who's the masked man? Why are you holding the gun on me? Oh, save the question. Was the bank open, Rick? Sure, I told you it'd be open on a Saturday night. Lambert has a thousand dollars in his pocket. Dig it out, Lambert. We can use it. Hey, but that money... I said dig. You hand it to Ricky. You better do what he says, Lambert. Uh, here. Oh, thanks, Lambert. What kind of a deal is this, Applegate? Who are these two? These two know all about our little game. The thing I waited here while you two went to the bank... <laughs> the masked gent mistook me for Lambert and told me all about his scheme to trap the two of us. I'll rip that mask off and see who oh, it is. Hold, hold it. Huh? Don't get within reaching distance of him, Rick. I've been watching his eyes. He's just waiting for a chance. And Ombre's fast moving. You don't know my son. Finally realizing the truth, huh? He's probably not in jail at all, Lambert. Chances are he'll be home in a few days. Rick, take Lambert's gun. <laughs> There. Now, take the boys next. Step where you step now. Don't get between me and that masked man. I'm not on. I'll make sure. Well, anything on him? No. Now, keep a sharp watch on those two. I'll deal with the masked man. Why don't you come and get my gun? <laughs> I know all the tricks, mister. I'll not get close so you can grab me. Now, Dan, you draw those guns real slow. If either of you make a fast move, you'll get the first shot. Do as he says, Dan. Take my gun. And make sure you don't step between me and the masked man. I'd rather be shot than do this. Yeah, that's it, Dan. Take the gun, Rick. All right, give him here, kid. But he's slick hard way. Now I'll take his mask off. I'll have no, to... no, not yet, Ricky. He's got a friend outside. He'll have to wear the mask when he calls his friend in here. A friend? Yes, yeah, an Indian. He's out in back with their horses. Now, uh, you go to the back window and call him in here. And if I don't... My gun's got Dan under the sight. Let the crook shoot me. I'm not afraid. No, that won't help, Dan. All right, I'll call him in. Ricky, you keep Lambert and the boy covered. I'll go with the mask, man. Now, go over to that back window, mister. Open it. Shall I call the Indian now? Yes. And remember, my gun's right on your back. Just tell him to come in here. Bakume! Dorion! What's that? His Indian name. Oh. Uh, tell him to come around to the front door and walk in. Melatu! Me Faro Pepe! Anything else? Now, uh, stand right over there next to Dan and Lambert. There's the Indian coming in here. I'll cover him as soon as he comes through the door. We'll line him up with the others, and then... You're going to kill all of us in cold blood? Sorry, Lambert, but that's how it has to be. Oh, let's get it over with, Applegate. I'm anxious to see what's back of that mask. 
Open that door and see if you can see the red skin. Right. I see. What? There he is in the back. He's here. Stand down. Oh. Tonto fired as he oh. came from the bedroom. One of his bullets struck Applegate's arm. Rick turned quickly. Rick, you... Oh, no, you won't. Oh. The ranger seized the opportunity to charge before the younger crook could fire. The masked man's fist shot out while Lambert leaped at Applegate. This could do it. I've got Applegate. And he's got guns. You cover both crooks. Oh. That does it. Get up, Sanders. Oh. On your feet. Get yeah. gun, sir. Thanks, sir. Oh. Goodbye, Kelly. We sure showed these two. My arm. My arm is hurt. We'll patch that up before we tie you. Get over there against the wall. Yeah. I think that... Oh, wait a minute, Applegate. Something happened to your white hair during the scuffle. Let's have a look. Why, you... Oh, a wig, huh? Golly, he's not an old man at all. He's young enough to spend many years in prison. Now, listen, let me talk. Let me and Sanders get away. We'll give you the cash we took. That cash goes back to the people who gave it to you. But you're not going to get away for returning it. Uh, if that Indian hadn't come in through the bedroom window, we'd have Yes, away. yes, that was lucky, wasn't it, Sanders? Go <laughs> from Lambert. Right. Um, that not luck. You speak an Indian. You tell Tonto, come that way with gun ready. Oh, Apple, take your fool. You let the masked man put it over on you. All right, come right. up. I'll get you covered. It's the the law. Ben Gilbert, you old sideways. All right, get those hands up. I mean you with a mask. Looks like I got here just in time, huh, Lambert? You're just in time to take charge of a couple of coyotes, but that masked man isn't one of them. Why do you want me, sir? For being in cahoots with Rick Sanders. Ben, don't act like a jughead. You've been here a minute ago, you'd have seen they weren't in cahoots. Hmm? There's Rick Sanders, and the bruises on his face came from the masked man's fist. And what's more... All right, all right, take over, sir. The prisoners are yours. Come along, Dan. Yes, sir. All right, come uh, Hey, hey, wait! Now, now, take it easy, Ben. Just keep your gun steady till I finish roping these two. Well, I guess the masked man must be all right if you say so. That masked man. He said the mask meant to him what a badge meant to a sheriff. <laughs> and that ties right in with what I was suspecting about the masked man. You have suspicions about him? Yep. I suspect that he's the Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, oh. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.